Howdy everyone and welcome to my fourth devlog. It's been about a month since the last episode, mainly because I was taking it a bit slower over the holidays and didn't have much to show you guys. Recently I've picked the pace back up and added a few awesome features to the game, the most notable addition being the new abilities. When I first started development, I had a very simple game in mind. I've tried not to become a victim to scope creep, but I couldn't help myself but add these two new abilities. I haven't implemented animations yet and the models are just placeholders, but both power-ups are functioning close to how they will in the final product. I've made a simple button to spawn in a few enemies just to test how each power-up works. Here's a little clip of both new abilities in action. This is the multi-grain minigun. The seed and grain projectiles don't hit the hardest, but what it lacks in punch, it makes up for with its super fast fire rate. Now we have the raisin bread rockets. Deadly rockets that explode on impact, destroying any enemies inside the blast radius. I've had loads of fun messing with these abilities and making them super overpowered and just blowing away obnoxious amounts of Mike's minions. In one of my last devlogs, I talked about moving platforms and how they weren't working the way I intended. I'd been putting it off for a while but I finally added a small system for them and it works flawlessly. Instead of animators, my platforms are now being moved by scripts which is harder to time and get synced properly but much more efficient. I now have control of the specific points the platforms are bouncing between and can also control the rotation of the platforms. If I need to in the future I can easily add on to this system to make smooth rounded paths like you see here but for now each platform's movement is very simple. Sliding on slopes was another important thing I kept overlooking and delaying. In the script that controls the rotation of my player, it now tests the ground you're standing on for the normal and rotates toasty based on that angle. If the angle becomes too great, in this case 40 degrees, you will lose grip on the surface and slide down. This same script is also responsible for adjusting my velocity vector to the angle perpendicular to the floor. Without adjusting this vector, it can cause weird behaviour like you see here where the player is walking off the slope faster than they're being pulled down. This can be solved by adding additional downward force while the player is on a slope, but this solution in itself can lead to other issues. Adjusting this vector negates the need for an additional downward force, and I think it's also just a cleaner way of doing things. I got this idea from a video made by Ketra Games, the link will be in the description. A while ago I said I would show off the targeting system and I still haven't, so now I will. It's still very crude and I didn't exactly add every feature it needs because I ran into issues with it and got distracted by other things. The way it works is, while you're holding the target button, it sends out an overlap sphere to check for any colliders on the layer named enemy. If it finds any, it then adds these enemies to a list and can check for which enemies closest to Toasty. It will then enable the target indicator above its head. If another enemy gets closer than the current closest enemy, the indicator will then be disabled and be enabled on the new closest enemy. This method works well, but in its current state there are still a few issues, like targeting through walls and jittery rotation as Toasty switches between targets. I'm still not 100% certain how I want to implement this system, which is part of the reason why I've been so slack with it. I've been contemplating a crosshair at some points for the game, but I'm not sure how it would fit. If you know a game with an awesome targeting system, let me know down below, I'd love a bit of inspiration. For my birthday a few days ago, I got gifted a drawing tablet. It's been super helpful in allowing me to imagine and create these characters for my game's world. Now I have these solid illustrations I can reference when I make the 3D models, instead of going in blind like I did with these guys. Hopefully in the next episode or two, you'll see some of, if not all of these guys brought to life. Since the shapes of these characters are really quite simple, I'll need to rely heavily on animation to convey the emotions and intentions and really bring the life out of these guys. I now have a Discord server up and running and will be posting a small test scene demo of my game there soon, so if you like the sound of being involved in the first demo, make sure to join the server. The link will be on the screen and in the description. And that's about all I've got for this one. If you enjoyed the video, maybe think about leaving a like and subscribe if you're keen on seeing more stuff like this. From now on I'll be trying to get a devlog out every fortnight, which should boost production of the game. I hope I see you in the next video, and thanks a ton for watching.